Oh, look. I actually remembered to stop the recording <laughs> at the halftime period. <laughs> <clears throat> I never got any answers back on whether people like that or not. Uh, A what? Uh, it's from Rogue Trader. Don't worry about it. I fucked up something and uh, I forgot to stop recording. <laughs> And I just didn't realize. I, I'm trying to figure out whether people actually care or not. <laughs> I, I I went to get lunch and my wife insisted that she wanted me to order Portuguese chicken, so I might have to go get a delivery order shortly okay. when it comes to the door. That sounds worth it, though, dude. I do like Portuguese chicken. Not that I've ever been to Portugal, so I'm assuming it's just like what you have in Portugal. Mm. Yeah, you know, just like uh, French fries are. Of course, what you get from France and Canadian bacon is just like the bacon that you get in Canada. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I knew you'd get that one. <laughs> I haven't seen Canadian bacon since I've lived in Ontario. We don't have it here. I think it's just, no, you you do have it there. It's just called what it's actually called, which is like back ham or something. Female. <clears throat> I mean, presumably in Canada, Canadian bacon is just called bacon. No. Don't do that, James. Don't do that. <laughs> and like, uh, the Ontario, where bacon is pea meal bacon and milk comes in bags, the friggin' psychopaths. Uh, Wolfgang wakes up in the morning. Gus is uh, laying out a nice breath, uh, breakfast spread of like a uh, couple of bagels and some oatmeal whole milk not skim or low fat in any way uh fruit and your choice of either crumbled sausage or bacon and he's got a newspaper out and is watching the television going oh uh, wolfgang did you see this thing about barbadosian generals and sky lasers it's very odd you know i really hope the corporations clean up that kind of nationalist nonsense sometime hmm. it's not always up to the corporations i think he doesn't say anything but flips the page of the newspaper his way of indicating he doesn't agree with you did you uh did you want the uh, funny papers the comics uh I, Jesus Christ! I don't know if Wolfgang would be into that shit. It's like, I'll take, I'll take the crossword puzzle. Okay, he pulls it out and slides it to you and says, "Now, I know you've got a busy day ahead, but I'm going to need unsalted butter tomorrow. So if you could pick some up before you come home tonight, the real stuff, not imitation, and definitely not margarine." Do they even have that in this world? Someone's yes. baking. Okay, it's like, do you want me to get it from that little bourgeois place that we normally get it from, or do you not like it anymore? But wherever you need to get it from is fine. Okay, because uh, I swear sometimes your taste changes so quickly it's hard for me to keep up with it. He flips the page of the newspaper again and moves the newspaper to cover does, his face. Does that... <laughs> yeah, so you can't see him rolling his eyes. He crosses his leg and then starts tapping one of his slippers against the table leg. <clears throat> Passively avoiding an argument with you. Is there something wrong? No, there's nothing wrong. Um, what, what do you have on the schedule today? Out and about doing interesting things in the world. <sighs> Fighting for freedom, liberation, that sort of stuff. And what are you really doing? So I think Wolfgang has like this moment of clarity. He's just like, uh, I was thinking about um, disrupting uh, rival gang influences in the under Red Lion City. You know, that sort of thing. All right. Keep your secrets then. <clears throat> Can you clean up? I have to get dressed. The shuttle to work will be here soon. Uh, yeah, um, so Wolfgang will, um, you know, follow him into the room and basically just be like, you know, I'm, I can't remember, the house was bugged, yeah? 
Uh, it's not it's anymore. Like it's not anymore. It's not anymore. Okay. It's like, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm trying my best to make sure that this works, right? Sure. And you've been trying for a while to get us out of this life, and you know, it's just, just the way things are. I'm close. I really am. It gives you a However, sad, sad smile. <laughs> However, the next couple of days, there is going to be some stuff that happens to Arasaka. Okay. I need to make sure that you know that you need to be safe in this instance, yeah? I mean, you're sure. If you're really sure, I guess I could call in from work or something. I don't have a lot of those, but... Um, so, when, when you're ready. Is that today? I need to know, because the shuttle will be here in, in like three minutes, he says as he's tying a tie. It won't be today. I hope. It's in there. Pulls that night. Not smooth, you know? I'm in... Let's just say I'm enlisting the help of someone that you're a big fan of. And you should probably know how unstable he is when it comes to Arasaka stuff. I, 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 I like... He doesn't I know like anything about against... what you're talking about. <laughs> I lean against the wall and I like tap the, the poster of Johnny Silverhand that he has up there. He rolls his like, eyes, clearly not believing you. Says, all right, all right, look. I know you thought it was a funny joke at the breakfast table, but no need to continue with this. Sometimes you just take it too far. This isn't a joke, and I really wish that you would understand that. Fast talk and persuasion. Oh, shit. Dave, I'm would you like to roll one. some dice I'm tonight? I'm roll a <laughs> one. Uh, perfect. What's the DC on this one? Uh, let's say 16. A good DC. Can use it. Can use empathy? Yeah. All right. You know what? I'm gonna burn a, all my luck on this, Arthur. Does he get Five a help luck. from Johnny Silverhand in the poster. <laughs> so like what you're saying is the only way you could you could possibly lose is if you roll a one, huh? Yeah, that's the roll. Oof. Right. <laughs> well, you managed to limp across the line with a, th oh, what was it, a three? Ye yeah. Yeesh. Yeesh. Good enough. And he says, you're serious. Yes. I, it's taken a while, but as I said, things are coming together. And... I want to get you out of this as quickly as I can. You hear the sound of a car driving up outside, and he says, look, I can't talk about this right now. I have to go. He gives you Just a kiss on the cheek and, and power strides out. You see, like, a guard come out with, like, a, a stun gun and, like, a RFID wand and waves it over his wrist as the guy runs, as Gus runs up, is like, ah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a few seconds late. Ah, I was saying goodbye to my husband, and the guard just like, identification and he pulls up his wrist and gets scanned and says get on the bus prisoner your husband gets in the bus sits in the back left part you know the place where all the protagonists sit and he puts his hand on the window as he stares at it you staring at him through the windows as he as it drives out of the cul-de-sac the steel gates of your subdivision closing behind him as he's taken away to his prison Arasaka mm. offices. Brain. Then you get a call from Marcus Bishop. Telling it's you, today. <laughs> it's gang time. <laughs> yeah. It's time to sit down and talk about a plan. Uh -huh. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Where does the meeting take place at? Old tapas. We had we had tapas yesterday. So I, think we need, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Can we More find tapas. Can we get some Portuguese chicken somewhere? <laughs> what about a crab boil? 
<laughs> I'm picking out those Sweet. crawdads and uh, <laughs> corn and, you know, all the fixings. Potatoes. Yeah. Sweet and sour soy. So whatever the future of pan, pan, Panda Express is. Oh, oh, oh. oh shit. <clears throat> Everyone's favorite mixture of, uh, you know... <laughs> MSG mayonnaise MSG. tomato sauce MSG look sauce. I like MSG you know MSG is great man yeah don't knock it all medical science says there's literally nothing wrong with it in reasonable amounts it's it's a meme though it's it's not a meme it's sure. that stupid people really believe that yeah well, I mean I, mean, I the use the same thing that happened to sulfites <laughs> because of you know people it's the same people who like them. eating Tide Pods so it's true they do look like candy though cutting their seat belts <laughs> but seriously like, i use i use the powdered uh chicken chicken stock from the asian aisle at the grocery store because it's got an msg in it and my stir fries and stuff excellent who needs salt when you got chicken powder portuguese chicken all right powder <laughs> it's uh it's a little tough to get real portuguese chicken but let's say for 50 euro bucks a piece you guys can sit down at a nice place that does it for breakfast the whole pot is boiling over with delicious macauan cuisine okay well i'm um i'll, I'll buy everybody else's but i'm, I'm eating like because i had just had a whole pizza as well so perfect well, it's two hundred euro bucks up front. Actually, actually, no, that's what I was gonna say because it was um uh, that, that was earlier. That, uh, that was, that was last worked, night. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll eat two then. Uh, I don't know. Bishop seems like a cold pizza in the morning kind of motherfucker. You know. Oh yeah, no. Bishop is like. Have you seen the the film End of Days, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, where he's against the devil? And there's there's a scene at the start of that where he sort of wakes up in the morning and makes like a a breakfast smoothie out of stuff he just finds in the kitchen, including like pizza on the floor. Puts puts it in the blender along with like you know cracked eggs and orange juice and yeah. Please stop. Have you, not seen, have you not seen this film, End of Days? Oh, okay. That's a great Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. He gets to he gets to fight the devil with a Glock. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So you um, guys are watching some guy butterfly a chicken and like toss eighteen different spices, uh, including you know what passes for paprika out here. <laughs> In America, in cyberpunk, <laughs> it's just, it's it's tofu grown on the vine, but it's like it's like surgical. Uh, it's like sliced in with like like uh, no, like everything here flavors. is authentic and good. What's that? Uh, what's that carcinogen carcinogenic red food dye? <laughs> <laughs> what was the one that they told you would lower your sperm count from Mountain Dew Yellow, Yellow Five? <laughs> Yeah, so you guys get these, uh, you know, pretty good butterfly cut chickens over roasted potatoes, soaking in with sauce. <clears throat> it's it's good. It's real, Bishop. Your stomach can't handle all of this non kibbleized food lately. <laughs> yeah, I live in a corporate zone. I I, I, I get reg I get better food than normal now. Oh, sorry, man. Who is it Pascal? They don't eat kibble. <laughs> yeah, between the tapas yesterday and the Portuguese chicken today, you know, you're like, oh, you have to go to the bathroom every thirty minutes. It's like, what is the sweating sensations? Oh, that's the meat sweats from actually <laughs> that's eating right. meat. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's a bad news. You're diabetic now. Sorry. Um... <laughs> what the fuck? That's not my, how that works. Why does my blood feel slow? Oh, that's actual meat. <laughs> uh, we so call that the donut below. condition. <laughs> last night I went below the plate, uh, looking into the situation with this punk knot. Um, it's been put together by a gang called themselves the Scavengers. They're uh, setting up to use it to take over scrappers. The, uh, actually, sorry, scrappers, scrappers. Uh, to, to take over uh, the lower city, try and uh, push out the other gangs, get themselves into protection rackets and the like. It's not a one-use thing. It's a they, they're using it to make a statement. Uh, also, uh, our benefactor contacted me. He's uh, looking to somehow use this to trigger off a conflict between Arasaka and Militech. So, I've got some ideas I wanted to run by you. Uh, I don't really see 
Militech or Arasaka specifically employing a punk mode against the other. But what I could see is someone brings a punk mode up above the plate to cause trouble and one side deliberately um, weakens the defenses of the other, creating a, 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 uh, a, an easy target for the uh, the gang and their punk mode. So I guess what I'm talking about here is a two-step plan. One is convince the gang that uh, they will get something out of taking the punk knot up onto the plate and causing problems for the corpse. And two is to find a way to weaken Arasaka's defences in such a way that makes it look like Militech has tried to cause some problems and any, any losses they've incurred through this punk knot issue have been left at Militech's doorstep. But if you've got other ideas, I'm happy to hear them. Do we know what Silverhand wants the Pung Note for? He well, wants it on Arasaka, doesn't he? Yeah, he's he's using this to create a compounding series of problems between Aratech and um, sorry, Arasaka and Militech uh, to try and uh, push a conflict. They are the two biggest in the area, aren't they? Yeah, look, and and well, they're the, they're the two biggest in the world. When it comes to when it comes to hardware for for military use, and uh, you want us to convince the crew, is everything? Well, we're going to find a way to make it make it look like it's in the gang's interests to do this. Well, they just, from what I understand, from what you've said, they just want to take over what's down here, right? Yeah. Does right. Militech or Arasaka have any like space down here that we're aware of? No, I'd say they stay up. Well, they might have some sort of secret R and D operations, but probably not the thing that we're going to find easily. What about so, Pascal? Mm. Does your what's your what's your dad do in the under in the undercity? Is that affecting them in any way? Either way, they would have more information on the ground than. We would. I can ask, but usually he uh, stays to his side. Well, if the punk knot people get their way, then he won't have a side. It is an avenue we can go down. I would. I would expect that if if these scrappers are using the punk knot to as a as a set piece they're not going to want to take it out of their territory except to raise havoc on a rival gang i think we're going to have to, i think we're going to have to steal it as opposed to convincing them to uh give up their their piece of leverage unless we unless we have a lot of, that we can promise them I don't think we have any any real leverage here right is unless we yeah. do something about like maybe their leader and he goes soft on them is this something that I can find out through like a street deal find find some leverage that we might be able to get over the scrappers mm. Perfect. Do know the, in charge? the other possibility is to convince them that uh, arasaka is worried about their punk knot is going to try and take them out and see if they can, can, can we can convince them into a preemptive strike because if we can if we can pit the scrappers against arasaka all we have to do is make arasaka think that militech was involved yeah black slap some Kenny Cross bumper stickers on it. Oh yeah, that'll convince them <laughs> that it's a secret Militech <laughs> operation. <laughs> those uniforms that we got from uh, from Militech Philippines in the in the car. <clears throat> Play get out the vote music while, <laughs> while driving it into the side of the building. Uh, yeah, you can make some calls. It's going to take time though. Like, it's not information you're going to be able to get in this meeting right here. Okay. All right. Do Let's... you know anything else about maybe like the leaders or anything like that? Uh, 
Sorry, Pascal, yeah. I'd actually like you to make the roll now. We'll get the results later unless you roll uh, a one or underneath the amount, then some other things will happen. Okay, what's the uh, DC? 21. You're asking for something way outside your wheelhouse. All right, I'm going to put my last two luck into it. And oh boy, that went pretty well last time. Yeah, I know, but... 27. There's no way you can roll a natural one twice in a row, right? That'd be crazy. <laughs> I did specifically did not say those words out loud <laughs> since I rolled it tw twice in a row a minute ago. All right, let me just mark down your experience, and that's going to be pretty good for you. Uh, please continue. I could call up Juliana Rodriguez and have her burn <laughs> Militech was here with her space laser. <laughs> um, other question I had asked, by the way, is the red line, the old train line, does it connect up with any line that goes up on the plate? Like even no. getting the plunk? No. Mm -hmm. So how, yeah. how would you get the plunk up onto the plate? Uh, I mean, there's numerous roads. So it's the punk knot is a floating hovercraft. It doesn't need okay. the train. They're only using the train uh, leftovers is a source of like electronics and mostly scrap to armor it up. Okay. Creates the body of the vehicle. All right. So we're halfway there. It's a ground effect, it's a ground effect vehicle. No problem. Just needs wings. When, when, when he says Farad, does that jog, uh, pass Make an electronic check. Uh, I have cyber tech and I have electronic security. I also have electronic security. Electronics. This is electronics basic tech. Come on, I would I would know I would know about capacitors with cyber tech, right? I think <laughs> someone makes capacitors for you and you employ them. <laughs> well, but I mean, given the fact that you don't have electronics, I'm guessing basic circuit design is not your thing. You're I a mean, big part, picture. Part of Part of my plan was to run these names through through Fierro's hacking team as well. Ah, all yeah, right. So this is one of the reasons I, I involved Dante at the start was so that if we wanted to use his resources, we had his blessing because he he he'll benefit from this in some way. Let's have lab research. Lab research will turn up a hell of a lot more than any of the uh, other anything uh, could besides I use, could electronics. I use, could I use basic tech? Uh, let's do the library search first. What's the DC? Uh, for that, 20. What are you using? Oh, shit. What are you? Whoa. What are you using to make this search? Do you have a data term plugin and you're near a data I do. term? Okay. Yeah, I have a data term. All right. Term. So I feel like you stand up from your uh, Portuguese chicken made in Macau, not Portugal and plug in and about a minute later you come back with the following information for the folks at home he rolled a 10 which uh, exploded out to a 27. oh damn that's nice. pretty damn good um uh they weren't talking about any guy named farad they're turning the punk knot into a faraday cage oh shit given okay. the description that bishop has given you you think there might be an emp weapon located on the back antenna Well, that's interesting. They're trying to, you know, protect their vehicle from their own horrifying weapon. Weapon of mass destruction. Yep. I mean, look, a machine gun does a lot of damage in the cyber tech world. Uh, an EMP does a hell of a lot more. That's a real weapon. Nice roll, by the way. No wonder. That's, that's a big reveal. <laughs> that's, that's a yeah. huge plot point. <laughs> No wonder fucking uh, Johnny Silverhand wants this thing. If he's aware of that. So if we if this complaint goes off, we need to make sure that we're either in the punk dot or a long way away from it. Yeah, no kidding. Why is your uh, I'm pretty sure Gus doesn't have anything electronic in him, right? At least I'm not aware of it. Sure. Mr. Stud? <laughs> he doesn't need it. He's good. 
Hey, we'll All night, every anyway. night. <laughs> <laughs> when he doesn't have a headache. Yeah. <laughs> that got up. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, you said it's a, a hover tank, right? So is that is that gyro or is that like... Arrow, like what is it's that? What does that fall under? It's arrow. Yeah, wait, AB, sorry. AB. Mm, okay. So I have pilot arrow. So yeah, we're good there, I think. Um so maybe we just fucking just steal it. <laughs> I yeah, I mean the only, only consideration is this is a this is a serious gang. This isn't like the crap we've dealt with before. So and this like is in Pascal's own... gang or anything. And All this right. is in their, own, so... in their own territory, which they've locked down pretty heavily. So All right. So the other option is that we find out who's in charge of this place, and um, we either manufacture some dirt that would, you know, uh, make it so that his gang turns on him, or you know, we find some actual dirt, and that gives us an in to get inside. I think those well, are I, those are some pretty safe options. But I did I did make some notes about the other gangs in the area just in case there was some opportunity to create some gang conflict that might distract them long enough to to take the punk knot. But it is ready to be used, which means that there's every chance if there is a gang conflict, they'll try and use the punk knot straight away. Mm -hmm. I mean, why wouldn't they? Mm. This gang, what, what type of cyberware do they normally have? Are they just humans, they pissed off they're humans? Just, they're pissed off humans. They're too poor to afford shit like that. All right, so we're at a severe disadvantage if we come at them full front because they can just be like MP. Uh, okay. I mean, um, on the other hand, the instant they use that EMP, every fucking cop in the city is going to be rolling up on them. Yeah. On push box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, our old Mark Zeros, you know, legs. <laughs> and we've got to use the skateboard coppers. <laughs> Yeah, is there a mounted division in red line? So why don't we why don't we try and find out who the who is the dude then, the the one that runs it, or at least someone high up the totem pole and try and try and finger this dude or plant something on him or get him in trouble or something like that. Yeah, I thought this Pascal might be your your better area. Getting, getting somebody to give us this information. I think you're muted. Puma. Stuck in here. How about now? There you go. Okay, that was weird. I'll see what I can find out. Sorry, it's my personal AI calling me for some reason. <laughs> Siri? So then no, do we do we let this meeting weapon. do we let this meeting break and we cut to Pascal learning what he learns? Yeah, I think sure. that's pretty reasonable. Okay. Pascal, several hours later, you're somewhere where you feel comfortable making calls. Where is that? Uh, I think it would probably be his house. Okay. You get a call from one of your contacts. Okay. Ramirez. It's just like, okay, look, man, you got to get out. Got to get out right now. What's up? You're compromised. Some of the boys are coming for you. Who is it coming boys? from? It's from us, man. It's from the, it's from the fucking mafia. What? Yeah, look, you want to fucking talk about this now? They're coming for you right now. I can see them down the street. I, we could talk about this later. Get the fuck out. You got a bug bag? Go. He hangs up the call. Ramirez is a little flaky sometimes, but he isn't the kind of guy who would call in a, you're about to get hit by our own guy's call without, you know, a good reason. Okay. What do you do? Uh, Pascal is... Cool. 
Pascal is going to uh Pascal's gonna stay on this ground. If it, he said it he said it was so Ramirez Ram, Ram, sorry, Ramirez is, is Taglog Mafia. Yep. Okay. Uh Pascal is gonna no, Pascal's gonna pick the phone up and call Malaiko. Okay. All right. Um, I want to tell you what's happening in the background of the situation as it happens. Yep. So you moved into, a, it's not very nice, but is quiet and it's secure. And the guy right. who runs it is, as far as you know, a, a former net runner. Yep. Who has basically guaranteed the security of the people here. In fact, he scouted you as a client rather than the other way around. Right. So we see three guys roll up in like uh, it's Militech turf too, right? No, no, it's, it's uh, I, 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 I live in, right. in Militech turf, yeah. Yep. All right. <clears throat> so they roll up in uh, you know like a a backless jeep, you know, no top on it. Mm -hmm. Um, one two guys jump out the back, and then the driver like uh, leaves the car on. All of them pull out like shotguns, and one of them is lighting a Molotov cocktail. And they're just like approaching the facility, right? The door is locked and one of them like shoots the lock off with a shotgun, kicks the door open, and then like several doors along the hallway burst open over the next few seconds as all the former or current edge runners who live here just fucking bush with these guys as they're going down the hall. <clears throat> and uh, of course the Molotov cocktail hits the ground and people are... Uh, spraying it and putting it out with fire retardant meanwhile you you call maleko upstairs you you hear a lot of gunshots and then somebody shouting clear during this conversation mm -hmm. maleko answers almost immediately he goes uh my son i'm speaking with a filipino accent but like a godfather filipino accent maleko is there a problem I don't know, boss. Is there a problem? Some of the boys just heard news that you're in charge of the gang now, from the top. And yet my own son goes to the Philippines at my request. He meets with my boss and then comes back as my boss. Some of the people here were understandably excitable. I did what I could to alleviate their fears. But if you're calling me, it would seem some of them have strayed too far from the path. I'm glad to hear that you are well. And I, this is the point where, you know, you hear the sound of the Molotov breaking and somebody like slowly choking on their own blood downstairs. Like, oh, oh. One of the edge runners downstairs like picks up the, the, <laughs> the keys for the Jeep and like, you know, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm expecting beep 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 bang no 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 they're they're just unlocking the vehicle so they can steal it oh, okay okay yeah i figured they were gonna torch it but okay. no no they're just uh, they just got a free jeep man nice uh what would you do if you picked up the <laughs> keys to the car of somebody you just killed fair enough <laughs> uh I'm not running things. I believe there's been uh, definitely some misunderstanding, especially if it's, uh, or let me say, I wasn't going to be running things, but suddenly there's a hit squad showing up at my house. Well, perhaps firmer hands are needed oh shit are you literally just declaring war on your dad over the phone uh yeah pascal's pascal's pissed like pascal was gonna was gonna was gonna go the like softly softly route and once mm -hmm. like we got out from under the johnny silver hand yeah the, you know like once that immediacy was done like there was gonna be a nice fun conversation about you know let's talk about uh, you know, partnership, and you're, you know, you had said you eventually wanted to retire, but no, if he's like, 
sending hit squad death squads out then uh all right so it, his response on. is is cold and he says my son i've raised you for many years when you came to me a broken child i've done my best to mold you into the man you are today but i think you know that i don't respond well to threats especially to my family to my organization and to my businesses things can be said when one is angry but actions can't be taken back afterwards i would suggest I would... you rethink this course of action you're right actions can't be taken back i'm looking at three bodies out my window right now i don't know anything about that until you called and told me about it. If I oh, didn't say you... insight check, damn. <laughs> <laughs> if that's true, then you've lost complete control. And perhaps El Jefe is right and firmer leadership is needed. It's late, and you are understandably upset and wound up after the attack. I strongly suggest that you reconsider this line of thinking, Pascal. I'll give you the night to regain control. Okay, he if hangs you up. can't show me that things are no, better, he's, hung up. he's already gone. Okay. Yep. Again, the the theme of continuing the cool conversation on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, your boss said you suck. <laughs> Didn't say anything about him. Jesus. Yeah, he actually, well, he did. He said. He said. He said. Uh, you know, I, I, I never hear anything from this Maleko guy. Yeah. Exactly. Could, yeah. He didn't. He didn't, didn't say you suck. He just said, you know, nothing's going on over there. I need to go get her. <laughs> so he sucks. Now we gotta get got her over here. <laughs> Clemo's like, I'm gonna kill you, Pa. <laughs> oh man, you've fallen into the classic Cersei Lannister problem, man. You're like. I'll give you a day to get your affairs in order before I come over there. Oh if you God, said ten dude. sessions left, what he meant was three. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So that happened. Sure. You can hear the uh, edge runners downstairs arguing over who gets wet from whose wallet and uh, who gets to take their guns. Pascal is going to stay out of this. Um, <laughs> you know, he's going to be... Uh, yeah, they're all asking and... each other, who are they here for? <laughs> right, exactly. And Pascal's not going not gonna to volunteer that he was the target. Um, yeah. Uh, so, I guess first thing Pascal's going to... Well, no, you know what? Pascal's going to... Gonna, let this let this one go by for right now okay uh and and concentrate on finding out the information uh throw himself into his work and find out about uh this uh this gang okay yeah so uh your contacts continue to come back with information over time about the gang uh, however, you are realizing now that you've ultimatum with your father, your network is cracking because mm -hmm. uh, they had some ties to it. So loyalty lines are being split. However, with the 27, a lot of them are falling towards you. Uh, okay. Another portion are going neutral and a third, you aren't really sure what they're doing. When I say third, I mean a third faction, not a third of your people. Okay. <clears throat> No one has come out, like, overwhelmingly in support of him yet. Of course, no one really would do that before you, like, you know, your enemies typically don't announce, hey, man, I'm actually with the other guys. Right. Um, yeah, so, the leader of the gang is a woman by the name of Jane Cobb. Uh, she is a mercenary by nature. 
who uh, finally got fed up with that life and finally returned back to old Redline City after a, an illustriously long career of 14 to 20 years old. Um, after arriving back there with a pretty impressive kill count, she uh, used her large amount of money to kind of get set up in old Redline where a lot of money goes a whole hell of a long way and uh, set up the compound that basically became as the start of the Scrappers. As people would come to her with the same sort of sociopathic, murderous, uh, technologically, basic technologically proficient uh, skills, she kind of adopted them into an ever-growing family pseudo-military gang structure of, uh, of squads of essentially roaming murderous thugs who have mm, a passable moral code, but mostly just do whatever business an old red line will keep them alive long enough. Uh, so while she's well enough, she could get out of here. Most of the people around her and most of the people that work with her uh, couldn't live without her quite literally. Uh, so she set herself up as kind of a tyrant. The uh, One of the things that's a drawback, though, is that there is rumors in your network that uh, she may have a piece of cyberware that is a bomb. Uh, that well, During her time as a mercenary, she accepted a stint with Militech, and they implanted her as part of the, you know, typical exchange. And that that, uh, you know, could be remote set off at any time. She's been looking for somebody to get it removed. Rumor on the street says quietly, you know, it's nothing street level people would talk about, but people like you, people in the know in the black cyberware districts have heard she's trying to get it removed every few years. Okay. Really? Really? Yeah, you're thinking what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> well, I'm thinking we bar we bargain removal of the of the implant for the punk knot but what were, what were you well i mean i just i'm just thinking it gives us a chance to get close to it through through yeah. bones chance and leverage I don't, I don't know if she'd swap the punk knot for um for that but i think we can at least get close to it well i don't know if we if that's so if I, I can get I, it done, call, maybe we I can just call everyone and say, uh, yeah. we need to, we need to meet at the office now. Yeah. Cause maybe we don't even need to drive the punk knot. If she's on our side, she's got a Militech bomb in her head. So yeah. she's ex Militech. She doesn't like them either. They're just like, she's obviously got ties to corpse that we could pull on so i so and you get everyone the to, the, to the office and uh pascal says well i've got some answers and i've got my own problem uh the leader of the scrappers ex-mercenary for 20 odd years uh, used her stash to found the compound. Yep, she, just real quick, six years from the oh, time she was 14 years. to okay. the time she was 20. Ah, okay. At some point, rumor has it in my network, she uh, did a stint for Militech, and in return... They fitted her with a cyber implant bomb. She's been trying to get it removed for the past couple of years. I think there's a couple of ways we could use that as leverage. Coltan, I also have one of these, and I bet it's going to start ticking soon. Hmm. The old man sent a hit squad after me tonight. They got repelled by my building's uh, eclectic security. Your dad put a bomb in your head? When I was first starting out, that's how I paid for all my cyberware. So well, everyone needs practice, I guess. I'm going to need you to remove, it, remove mine 
And then that way you'll be really good at doing it the next time. Let me know the cost and I think we've I, I think we're gonna have to do it sooner than later. So I guess you'll get to try out your pre your pretty new lab downstairs. No, oh, that lab is for putting stuff in, not taking stuff out. But I'm sure we just need somewhere with a cryotank just in case things go wrong. Just read the instructions backwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like playing a country song backwards to get all your shit back. <laughs> my dog's alive. <laughs> yeah. My truck's back. I think we already made this joke. Yeah. Well, do we want to do some brain surgery or <laughs> talk about stuff first? So, do you think that she's anti militech I mean, she wants to bomb out, but I mean, you could work with someone you liked working for and still want them not to have a bomb in your head. Did Pascal get a sense of that? You got no profile on that. I mean, okay. your check was high, but not that high. Yeah. Okay. When's the last time I, she was I, looking? I don't know. Do we know that? Uh, uh, earlier last year. So I think that this gives us a reason to get in front of her. We can offer this service. If she's anti Militech, then potentially what we can bargain is we tell them that we're going to, um, we want this attack staged and planned on, planted on Militech so that Arasaka um, re responds against Militech. We convince them to attack an Arasaka resource, do as much damage as possible, and, and withdraw. And then we plant evidence to pin the blame on Militech and they're in the clear if the military, if Arataka goes after the corp rather than after the gang. But I think we need to get in front of her to have this conversation. We need to get a feel for where she's at with Militech. She she might not want Militech dragged into this. Does Pascal but you're right. feel that if we can't get the bomb out, it's pointless. Enough, enough juice to set this meeting up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you really need to worry about the bomb that you've told your dad he should explode in the next 24 hours. But, right. you know, yes. I don't control your life. You choose your own path. Yeah, no, I just... I... <laughs> you have the juice to swing this. Okay. You, I... do, you do you. All right. Uh, I can probably set the meat, but I feel like we should uh, take care of me before I explode, and then I'll set the meat. Yeah, you'll probably need a few days of bed rest after me having your head open. Ah, I'm fast <laughs> on my feet. Well, okay. What's the roll, Arthur? Uh, removing this requires a full hospital with a surgery center. No. Oh. Or would you think you're just going to do this in a back alley? I thought he could. Is do my in, is in my his, lab not? Lab. No, uh, your your official lab inside Dante's tower is a full. Well, I was going to say, do we something. do we go to to Dante That's and ask for? We to, we're going to Dante's office. Ask for yeah. permission to maybe explode someone inside his building. Yeah, I mean, you don't even have to ask Dante. You're the director of that facet for you know those floors. If you want to uh -huh. borrow one of them, yeah. Yep. Make sure we have a cryo tank in there just in case. Um, let me see how much cryo tanks cost. So make sure like a hundred thousand. Oh, that's rough. You have maybe one cryo tank. Oh, one's all you need. That's right. Um, at least you I will think they're 000. because this isn't work related. Really you will need to pay for your own materials, which are two thousand five hundred euro bucks worth. That's fine. Okay. And the surgery will take six hours. Can we get a um, an EOD box they can drop the explosive into just in case it gets set yes. off? Yes, if it's if it's yeah. correct, you'll remove yeah. it safely. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, it's, it's on a, the items sheet. Um, medical cryo tank, yeah, hundred thousand. Yep, that's fine. Um, it requires a twenty-five roll of medtech. Okay. 
Hey, um, Arthur, I'm sorry, I'm literally falling asleep here, but do you mind if I just leave and you guys keep playing? No, like, is that I okay? feel like now's a good time to stop. We'll we'll okay. keep whether Gleemo is alive or dead from this role <laughs> oh, up in the air until we return in three weeks. <laughs> Wow, I was going to say, you know, I'd have time to make another character if this goes badly. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, I think, you a... should, I think you should have a standby character ready to go. <laughs> if he doesn't succeed uh, on this role, you explode. You know that, right? <laughs> okay. I apologize, gentlemen. Like, no, I'm no, just, we're just right around normal like... stopping time anyway. I, yeah. I also love the drama of nobody knowing whether Pascal's alive or dead. We stick him inside a box full of polonium. <laughs> yep. Cool idea. You play Mash Nathers. Hmm? <laughs> then you'd be trying to kill everyone in the party. All right. Dave, what do you got? Hey everyone, I'm Sleepy Dave. You might know me from everyone's favorite pastime, sleeping, which I'm going to do right after this. Uh, thanks for playing. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah. Uh, that's it. I'm tired. All right. Let's talk to today's Dave, Colton Bones, who rolled nothing. Yeah. Speaking of everybody, take three floating IP. I'm Drummer Boy. Mm. I make music and put it on the internet. You can find it at Spotify, at Drummer Boy, also Roleplay Radio, also Sonneset, S O N N E S E T. Also, all those things on my YouTube. Throughout all my music is on YouTube now. At least the one, the albums that I made, um, not with roleplay. Um, so if you're a YouTube YouTube listener, go over there and trying to trying to get my monetization back. I'm about a quarter of the way there. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Just making music, doing stuff. Gleema, what's up? I was gonna say, Mr. Peruvian Chicken just stepped out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Gleemo. Uh, I had fun tonight. I guess we'll we'll find out if uh, if Pascal lives or dies. Uh, whenever the next time we play, oh, is. we'll skip intros and we'll just start on that roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm gonna do it. Absolutely, we'll do beginning intros at the second half. Beginning first episode is just a whoop of a roll <laughs> happening. <laughs> oh no! That is 100 percent how we're doing it. Perfect. Perfect. And I uh, dump this session's luck into next session and use no. both. No. Damn it. <laughs> and I can't even assist you with the surgery because I'm going to be out. Oh, yeah. You're going to be way out. Nope. Uh, yeah. That's, that's um, you know. <laughs> I believe we started 20 minutes early. And the intros went 20 minutes longer than normal. <laughs> mm. <laughs> what the fuck, guys? <sighs> We're on brand. It's true. Got anything else, Gleemo? We got. Um, yeah, no. Um, I'll be back on Solaris Night sometime next week, maybe. Oh, perfect. And... I know the guy who runs that. Yeah um so you know look for me there with some battle tech where i flub more rolls um i get headshot a lot in, on that show um i'm looking at james and he's doing this and there we go james is back what, I, what did i do sorry james, we're out what was i doing what was i doing oh, you were telling me to stretch keep going keep going go along oh sorry okay no worries <laughs> Anyway, uh, uh, off to you for outros. Okay, I am Grim Duck James. I'll be back here on Saturday for the finale of season two of Rogue Trader. Uh, and then still know the better still this coming week as well, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, otherwise, back in a couple of weeks or a few weeks for some more Cyberpunk. Otherwise, find me on Arthur's Discord, on YouTube, uh, etc. iTunes, my podcast, which is now <laughs> in hiatus. Had That's a good time tonight. Thank you very much, Arthur. I feel like you're doing all this just so I won't have an episode on your podcast. <laughs> no, no, well, it's, it's, it's more the. It's, it's, I'm just trying to get the new podcast up. <laughs> the yeah, grimmer, yeah, darker def podcast. Uh, you'll, you'll definitely be in the Dice Mechanics podcast. Only streamers can be on the podcast, and you're now a YouTuber. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, that hurts. That hurts, buddy. <clears throat> Look, I've, I've had my eight-year-old son on the podcast. It's not exactly an exclusive club. Uh, this is the one that said I'm bad at playing Minecraft, right? That is one of his observations in life, yeah. <laughs> Just wanted to zero in on which one it was. Which <laughs> child. All right, that's it. We'll be back in three weeks. We're going to open no intros on the roll after a graphic description of the surgery. We'll see you then. Uh...